Hey Yu-Gi-Oh players, Paul here. In today's video, I'm going to share what are, in my opinion, the five best pendulum decks for beginners who are kind of trying to learn how pendulums work. So the thing about pendulum monsters and the pendulum summoning mechanic is that um, it's kind of not been met with the best uh, sort of reactions. A lot of people are like this with synchros and exes. They just feel like it's too new or it's too complicated. I don't need to learn how to do this or I can't be bothered to understand it. But the thing is, over the past two years, we've kind of you know assimilated pendulum monsters into the Yu-Gi-Oh game. And I think that it's actually a really fun mechanic if you're willing to give it a shot. So these are five decks that kind of introduce people to the pendulum mechanic in a way that's not overwhelming, but still allows them the ability to compete. They're all pretty relevant, pretty usable. So yeah, let's get started. So the first deck is Dino Mists. Um, this is a deck of water machine type pendulum monsters. It came out earlier this year um, in Breakers of Shadow. This is a really easy deck to get. None of these cards are terribly expensive. In fact, most are commons. And the way that it works is really easy. All the monsters in your pendulum scales just exist to protect your regular monsters. So um, they either protect your monsters from being targeted or they protect your monsters from being destroyed. When your monster gets targeted or would be destroyed, you send the monster from your pendulum scale into the extra deck and your monster is safe. The monster in the field, that is. So um, this is great because it just allows you to continue to accumulate monsters in the field and it makes it difficult for your opponent to get around them. And the Dynamis monsters themselves just have basic effects, small attack increases, piercing damage, or effects like when they attack your opponent can't use certain cards. And it's great, it's nothing too crazy, it's not a lot of complicated summons, um, and they also have some spell and trap supports that work really well, you know, like Dynamis charge and things like that. So um, they have a way of searching themselves out from the deck with a card that's very similar to Tenki, and you know, a lot of their spells and traps just continue the focus of protecting your monsters from being attacked. My favorite thing about Dynamis is, like I said earlier, they're extremely affordable. This isn't a deck that's going to cost you an arm and a leg to buy, and I think that that's really great. Um, it still follows the pendulum mechanic, so when you're using those Dynamis monsters to protect your stuff that's on the field, they're going to the extra deck, which means they can be special summoned back later, and that's really cool. In fact, one of their spell or trap cards lets you return those monsters from your extra deck to your hand so that you can reactivate them in your pendulum scales or just summon them as monsters. So while they're doing their job of protecting your field, they're giving you resources to use later. So it's really kind of just the pendulum mechanic in a really simple form of just protection and longevity and the effects aren't overly complicated. They don't have any, you know, super crazy like Xyz and synchro plays unless you want them to. And that's really great. So Dynamis is definitely an easy one to pick up and play. Next deck's Ignites. Um, this is actually a super streamlined strategy. It's a lot of fun. Um, so basically the way that Ignites work is they all have roughly the same effect. You can destroy, when they're in the pendulum zone, so you know, you've got one in this zone, one in that zone. So when they're in the pendulum zones or scales, you can destroy both of them to search another Ignite monster from your deck. And so they both go into the extra deck to be used later and you search a new Ignite monster. And then when you put two more on the scales, you can do the same thing, send them to the extra deck and get another Ignite. So while you're doing this, you're actually taking a neg one because you're losing two cards for one, but you're putting all of your monsters in the extra deck to be summoned later. So once you fill your scales up with two scales, you can then summon all of your old Ignite monsters that you got rid of and just get them all back. And there are also a few cards like Ignite Reload that make this a little bit easier. You can shuffle your pendulum monsters into the deck and just draw a card like the old card Reload. And um, they also got a new Ignite, like, oh, what's that, feel? that spell card that they got recently in that set. Um, I'll remember the name, but yeah, so it's great. And the thing is, they're all warriors. So they're really easy to search out with Rhoda and also Summoner's Art because they're vanilla monsters. And you can make any of the warrior-based Xyz monsters um, think cards like um, number 86, Rongo Miniot, and things like that. So yeah, this is really, really just a, a simple, easy to play deck, um, but at the same time you can use like some fire-based strategies. I mean, it's got like fire monsters and stuff like that. And a lot like Dino Mist, it does a simple job of just getting your monsters into the extra deck to be pendulum summoned again later without any crazy complications. Next deck is a more popular meta one, but that's Magispectors. Now this deck isn't actually terribly expensive to get a hold of, it's just, you know, maybe if you're anti-meta playing then you wouldn't like it. But 
Um, Magic Specters also work in a very simple way. Whenever you summon them, they can search a Magic Specter spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Really simple, they work just like, you know, Elemental Hero Stratos or something like that. And so, um, that's really it. They don't actually have effects when they're in the scales. But their other cool effect is that they can't be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. This is extremely useful. This means that they aren't susceptible to Dark Hole or Raigeki, and they also can't be effect failured or breakthrough skilled or, you know, any cards like that. So that's really great, you know, not being targetable, not being able to be destroyed. They don't have great stats though, but the spells and traps that they search all have something in common. All their spell and traps let you tribute one of your Magic Spectre monsters to usually get rid of another card in the field. So, for example, you know, Magic Spectre Tornado lets you tribute a Magic Spectre monster and banish one of your opponent's monsters. Or, you know, Magic Spectre Tempest lets you tribute one to negate a summon or a monster effect. So, this is a really great, simple strategy. It works really well. And they've got Majesty's Pegasus, which is a field spell that just lets you rotate the Magic Spectre monsters out faster and faster each turn. Um, and it's really simple. Whenever you're tributing those Magic Spectre monsters to use their spell and trap effects, they go to the extra deck, which means they can be resummoned later on, get their effects again to search more cards, and it just rinses and repeats. Now, a downside of this strategy is that it can take a little bit of time, and also um, you'll eventually probably run out of spells and traps, and the monsters have a low attack. But there are ways to circumvent all of those things. The field spell gives them more attack points, and they can also just make, you know, Xyz plays, so you can make stuff like Totem Bird and Lightning Chidori that are win-specific, because all the Magic Specters are win monsters, and that's really great. Also, Magic Specter Supercell lets you recycle all of your, you know, Magic Specter spell and trap cards from your grave to use them over again, and, um, yeah, so it's a really fun, simple deck. A lot of people actually hate playing against it because it can be annoying, but the simplicity of the strategy is also kind of the beauty of it. So for somebody who doesn't want to like bother with a lot of crazy complicated pendulum stuff, this is another great suggestion. Next up is vanilla pendulums. So um, what I mean by vanilla pendulums, it's basically just a series of pendulum monsters that have a lot to do with normal monsters. So these are all normal pendulum monsters. Think cards like, I have a list here <laughs> actually. Um, all the Draconia cards, Dragon Horn Hunter, Focalt's Cannon, and that one Lance thing. Lance of Fornefkus, um, just look it up. Yeah, but they all have effects that basically buff your normal monsters. They either, they either give it piercing or let your normal monsters attack again or, you know, protect your normal monsters in some kind of way, give them extra attack. And that's really great. Plus, you can use them with cards like, say, Summoner's Art, which makes you able to search all of your normal Pendulum monsters really easily, or Heat Wave, or Tyrant's Throws. So, um... All those cards are really great. It's just a simple pendulum strategy, and whenever your opponent gets rid of your pendulum cards, they go to the extra deck, and they can be summoned again later. And there are a couple of different ways you can run this. You can actually use cards like Rescue Rabbit with um, the same normal dinosaurs you know and love, Sabersaurus and Cabazals, and they'll get the buffs from you know these cards. Plus, you can use Fossil Dig to search them out easily, and it's just great. You can you know make Lagia and Dolka and things like that if you want to. Um, or, you know, you can use like Rota and stuff. So yeah, the normal Pendulum deck is a lot of fun. It's simple, it's effective, and it doesn't really require that you use a lot of crazy complicated plays unless you want to. And the last Pendulum deck I would recommend for beginners um, is Odd Eyes Magician. So this, in my opinion, is probably the most complex one, but um, if you've played other Pendulum decks, you'll probably have gotten the hang of Pendulums by the time you pick this up and realize that it is probably also the most fun and flexible of the Pendulum strategies. So you can actually just pick up three Master Pendulum Structure decks and you can get your hands on that. It's only 30 bucks to get three of them and you have all the stuff you need. And there are loads of Magician cards and Odd Eyes cards that have come from various packs in the past year or two that you can grab. And it's, so it's kind of hard to explain it on video, but basically the way it works is you've got your Magicians, which are all Pendulum monsters that have different effects when they're in the scales and you know, you just summon back more Pendulum Monsters and make plays. They can make Xyz, they can make Synchros, they can search more Pendulum Monsters. Like I said, it's probably not as accessible as the other decks in this list. It's kind of more for when you got the hang of Pendulums and you want to give it a try. But what I love the most about this deck is really the flexibility that it offers. Um, there are so many different Magician Pendulum Monsters that have come out over the years and we've still got more coming, I think, in the next set. And there are a lot of different Odd Eyes Monsters that you can use too. Um, you know, there's an Odd Eyes Synchro Monster and an Xyz and several other 
and a ritual and actually several other variants of the regular old odd eyes pendulum monster so it's probably the just most versatile fun pendulum deck look up builds of it online there are loads of ways to play it um and yeah that pretty much concludes the five most beginner friendly pendulum decks just for getting into the mechanic and the best part about pendulums too is that um there are loads of cards you can tech into it so you know you've got cards like Rescue Hamster and cards like Archfiend Eccentric and the Draco Slayer engine and you know Guiding Ariadne. So pendulums are a lot of fun. I know they get a lot of hate even still. I'm pretty surprised. I mean the mechanics kind of assimilated into Yu-Gi-Oh, but there are still people who are kind of afraid or just apprehensive of trying it out. Try out some of the decks in this list. I think you'll like all of them. You'll find that they are pretty simple and when you get the hang of it, they can be really flexible and really versatile and powerful. So yeah, give a Pendulum deck a try. These are five ones that I suggest, but I mean, like, there are loads of others. I thought about, you know, just Performer Pals and Cleeforts and um, stuff like that. Those are other cool Pendulum decks you can look into. Metal Foes, obviously the newest one, but they can get a little bit pricey. So, yeah, that's it. Um, try one of them out. Let me know how it goes. Any other suggestions for Pendulum decks for new players? You could also drop those in the comments. And that's going to be it. So subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Hope you guys liked the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And I will see you in the next one. Later.